Italian guys, today I have, I had a click about a quote. And maybe you've heard that quote, maybe you have not heard that quote. And the quote goes like this. A normal man sees a mountain as a mountain. A seeker does not see the mountain as a mountain. And the master, the enlightened being, sees the mountain as the mountain. So I had a click and I want to share it with you all. So before we start, Nityanandam, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Okay, so there's a few things I want to share and then I'll put everything together. Powerfulness is non-violent. Somebody who's truly powerful will be non-violent. So this is basically like the click I had is actually a, a good way to start to, to have the, the capacity to identify somebody who is really powerful, who is, by powerfulness, I refer to um, soft power. So Amji says, soft power always wins over hard power. Kala Bhairava is the embodiment of soft power. And soft power is basically a power which is non-violent, whereas hard power is a power which is um, which is violent. So, as you may know, many people abuse Swamiji and us, the disciples of Swamiji, uh, for various reasons. And the way they present themselves, they present themselves as if they really know. Okay, they, they present themselves as if they have some form of clarity. And with that clarity, they have the guts to come forward and say whatever they say. And what they say is most of the time a uh, little bit violent. They will use words which are very offensive. Um, now, I want to go to the quote. I had a click. A farmer sees the mountain as a mountain. A seeker does not see the mountain as the mountain, and the master sees the mountain as the mountain. But the master and the normal person are in two different states altogether. They are not in the same space at all. Yet they see the same thing. They see the same thing. The click I had is... Somebody who is not seeking, somebody who is not trying to um, go beyond his identity, somebody who is not um, infusing life, time and energy into giving, giving a breakthrough to himself or herself, or basically trying to cognize the bigger picture. Somebody who doesn't, is, doesn't have seeking, he's basically, okay, whatever he understands of the world, that is the world, and he just operates like that, he doesn't question anything, and just keeps going until he dies. Now a seeker, so for that person, a person who does not question, doesn't have any seeking, a mountain is a mountain. He sees a mountain and he doesn't have any doubt that this is a mountain. When you start to seek, you have, you start to question many things. And you start to look for the nature of reality. And in the process, you will, you will face all kinds of SDHDs, self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. Now the person, the first person who does not seek, he doesn't have self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. He doesn't, um, he has it, but he doesn't, it's not manifested, means he doesn't engage with it because he is so clear about See, if, if there is some life, some self-denial, some life negative cognition, the person who doesn't have seeking will not even, even, even try to see that as life negative, as self-denial, or he doesn't even cognize and he's okay with it. He will say, okay, life will cheat you. Life is hard. Life is struggle. And he will never question that. And he will operate and make decisions according to that. But the seeker, at some point, if he has this cognition, that life is a struggle, when he starts to seek, he will start to question that, that cognition about life. And in that process, he will face different forms of self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. 
And that is the process of the disciple, of the seeker. It is to, and as he engages with self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, he has to discard that as it comes. As he faces different forms of self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, he has to um, complete that and drop that. And for that reason, a seeker will not see the reality as a normal person. Because he's in the process of dismantling Maya. The first person, he is fully swallowed by Maya. So he doesn't question and what he sees is what is there. But there's no questioning about it. He's just completely stuck in it. The seeker, because he's starting to dismantle the Maya by his conscious decision of seeking to seek, he starts to dismantle. So, there's, so he starts to realize so many different things which challenge his understanding of what is real. And therefore, the seeker will not see necessarily the mountain as a mountain. The master has comp no longer has self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. When he sees the mountain, he sees it as a mountain. But the way he, un the, the, the cognition from which he operates is not at all comparable to the cognition from which the first person who does not seek operate because the master has realized the, 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 the nature of reality. Whereas the, seed, the normal person doesn't have a, a single clue and he's not even interested about it. And that is why also that we say spiritual depression. Actually, spiritual depression is that somebody, when you are swallowed by Maya and you don't even have the inspiration to dismantle Maya, the seeking is not even there. That is because of depression. You don't even, even want to discover or look into the reality. That is because of a deep, deep, deep self, self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, which put that being into depression. So people, um, so wait, before that, so the master, when he is in the space of uh, completion when he doesn't no longer has self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, he radiates powerfulness. And his powerfulness is non-violent because he has completed all the self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. So the way the master will present himself will be very powerful. But if you look at the space from which he operates, it is only from a, uh, from a, a non-violent space. And it is always for the good of people around them from the context of enlightenment because he has realized enlightenment and enlightenment is the best thing that can happen to any being so when he engages with somebody it is always from the context of allowing or creating the space for that being to experience enlightenment the first person for instance who abuses in that case if i take abusers they will come, they will be all loud and they will, they will feel, no, this is true, you know, this is fake, this is this, this is that. They will use all foul words, foul, 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 foul words. <laughs> and they will abuse and everything. And, um, and they, will, they, they will look as if they don't have self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. It is not that they don't have self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. It's that their depression is such that they don't even want to look into that. The seeking is not even, has not even started. And how to see if somebody is powerful or not, it is about the way that they uh, respond to life. So, when the, pers when the person, and that is why having a master is such a blessing, because the master, whatever he does, whatever Swamiji is doing, it is for the sake of us to realize what is self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, and discard it from our life. It's a very sacred relationship. But for that you need to have a certain you need to have a certain amount of desire to experience the ultimate. If that desire is not there, then you will you will you will see the responses of the master in the way that um, it, you will not understand the context of what he's doing. The master is responding to us from the cognitions we have. Because we are stuck, stuck in these cognitions, he will play that game for us to realize that we are stuck in these cognitions so that we can unstuck, so we can unclutch and free ourselves from that and experience 
uh, our consciousness. But a normal person who does not have uh, the space of enlightenment, who has self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, when they engage with you, it's always to, um, to strengthen that form of self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. And most of the time, they will also strengthen the belief of that there's no need for seeking, which is very, very bad. Um, that is why the environment is very important. The Vatavarana is very important because um, we have to be in an environment which supports our seeking so that we will be more successful, more ferocious and more successful in our seeking and we can complete uh, the self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial. So I had this click with this quote, um, yes, so that the ignorant man who is swallowed by Maya, he might project himself like he doesn't have any doubt, hatred or denial. Well, I'll say doubt because hatred, yeah, you can see, <laughs> denial. Anyways, let's put SDHDs. He projects himself as if he doesn't have any H SDHDs. And the master also projects himself like he doesn't have SDHDs. But the difference is that the master doesn't have SDHDs and that the ignorant man has SDHDs. And you can see that by the space that they carry, the way they engage with life and how when you engage with them, you get triggered. You get triggered. Why? Because that being, that ignorant person, triggers the low frequency emotions. You will get angry, you will get jealous, you will get envious. You, you, that will be triggered in you intensely because they are stuck there. And when they engage with you, they trigger that because that is from what they operate. But when the master uh, relates to you, he doesn't trigger these things because he doesn't operate from these things. So, so that's, that's something I thought was very powerful. So I wanted to share with that with you all. So yes, abusers, they may look like they know what they're doing, but they don't. If you look at the space, you can clearly see they have no clue what they're doing. It's just that they're not interested in seeking, which is, I guess it's their decision, but, um, but that decision is very dangerous for seekers. Because if at some point an abuser triggers or awakens a form of self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial in you, then you might decide to drop the seeking. And if you make that decision, then you go back to the first state of ignorant man swallowed by Maya. So that cannot happen. So that should not happen. So yes, that's a click I wanted to share with you guys today. So don't be fooled by abusers. Always look at the space from which they operate. Are they adding something to your life or are they just triggering the, the low frequencies of fear, greed, anger, frustration, uh, you know, cunningness and all these low frequency emotions which, uh, which are running the lives of an ignorant man. So seeking is very important and cherishing the, re the relationship with the master is utmost important because that relationship will allow you to have to make, it will make your, seek, your seeking successful your seeking will become successful. So yes, with this, uh, thank you guys for watching these videos. Like, subscribe, comment, check the description below. A lot of interesting content. I added today actually the Bhagavad Gita decoded. Swamiji uh, did a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. So for those who are interested, the link is down below. So with this, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nidhyanandam.